worship. Um, those of you who brave the weather, anyway, huh? It, it's uh, the first snow of the season is always a telling one, isn't it? <laughs> so glad that you're here today as we join together, as, as the grace of Jesus moves us to fearlessly join God in loving the world. I know many of you that might be here are online with the weather, so welcome also to those who are with us online. We have a few um, videos this morning. One is our announcements, and it's followed up. We're going to be honoring our veterans. So it, there's going to be a little vet, um, video tribute to our veterans also. So welcome to worship. Thank you to Pete Vandenberg. Thank you to our band and um, the wonderful way that they led us into worship. And, um, and we hope that you meet God here today. Here are today's announcements for November 14th. You are invited to the to uh, to join us in a service for thanks and gratitude on Wednesday, November 24th at 6:15 p.m. at the downtown site. We will pra we will praise God for the many blessings we have experienced this year. The Thanksgiving Eve service will be both in person and online. Looking to share your Christmas gifts? Well, your Christmas cheer by sharing your music gifts? If you, your child, or someone you know would, let, would be willing to sing or play a solo or duet for one of our Sunday Advent services, please contact Eric Knapp in the church office by Thanksgiving. Small groups are invited to look at the birth of baby Jesus. Small groups are invited during Advent to take a fascinating look at the birth of Jesus through stories in the book The Journey, Walking the Road to Bethlehem by Adam Hamilton. We follow the footsteps of Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, and others, gaining insight on our own journeys with Christ. For more information or to join a group, contact Kathy Larson in the church office. Bye! Bye. Have a blessed day! Oh, and if you want more information, contact the office and any of the volunteers. like to have um, those who are here who are veterans please stand so that we can give you um, our thanks.
And then please, everyone stand as we begin worship. In the Spirit's embrace, you are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. Here. We are loved, welcomed, welcomed, and and wanted wanted here. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also also with, with you. you. Thank you. This is the victory feast of all.
join in the prayer of the day. God of justice, you desire for us to cultivate compassion and work toward justice. Teach us to love as you love. Amen. So today's reading comes from the book of Amos, and Amos was alive about 100 years after. Last week we had King Solomon building the temple, and um, now we're having Amos, who is at... Af oh, you may be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have Amos, who's um, in the southern kingdom, and he's talking to those in the northern kingdom. It's after the kingdom has been divided into two different, um, the, to two different kingdoms. So we have a reading today from the book of Amos, a prophet who is talking about what the, those in the northern kingdom are doing. The reading for today is from the book of Amos. The words of Amos, who was among the shepherds of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of King Uzziah of Judah, and in the days of King Jeroboam, son of Joash of Israel, two years before the earthquake. And he said, The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of shepherds wither and the top of Carmel dries up. Seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts will be with you just as you have said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like the, an overflowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I'm going to invite Kirsten to come up in person this week to do our children's time. So if you're kids... Pay attention to Kirsten now. Oh, actually, everybody, pay attention. <laughs> oh. Good morning, good morning, friends. You usually see me up on the screen. Unfortunately, this um, Thursday, I was not feeling great. So you get me live. Um, so as we discussed last week, the kingdom was divided, right? We had the northern kingdom, Israel, and it actually prospered for about 800 years. You can imagine 800 years, like, that would be like, America was started in 1776. We wouldn't be there until another, what, 300 years from then. So a long time. It prospered for a long time, and it was about the size that it was going to be, okay? But then there's Judah, and that is the southern kingdom. Now, we have um, Amos. So there we have it. Israel, right? And then we have Judah. So we have Amos. And Amos was the first in a long line of prophets. But he was not a prophet that was really like um, feeling like, this is what my family does. I'm going to do this. He was actually a shepherd. He was a fig tree pruner. Uh, seems a very specialized job. And, um, and so he actually had a feeling in his heart that he needed to tell a message that may not be that popular to those in the northern kingdom. He was from the south. So imagine, this is like maybe for my young friends, like you telling your older or younger sibling what they should do, right? It does not feel great. <laughs> you know that they're probably not going to say, great idea. I think we should do that. You didn't realize it, but you actually are in the two kingdoms right now. We are going to have you play this out, okay? So those on this side, you are in the northern kingdom. You are Israel. 
You on this side, you are in Judah. You are in the southern kingdom. So you are where Amos is from. Now, I need everybody to stand up for this. Great. All right. Here we go. Because nothing makes it stick in the old noggin than actually playing it out, right? You guys are saying we are too wealthy. Like, listen, things have been good here. So I want you guys to actually go like this. Huh. Mm-mm. Like this. Oh, I know you can play it harder, people. There you go. Good, good. Right? And they think they're so rich because they're actually worshiping a God that is not the true God. Right? Now you guys, Judah, my southern kingdom people, I need you to actually sit there and say, uh-uh. Turn to them and go, uh-uh. And say, oh, you're not worshiping the true God. You're more in love with your money, and your heart is getting so small. Do that for me, friends. So small. Your heart is getting so small. That is the message. You can go ahead and sit down. Thank you. You did pretty well there. You didn't even realize it. Open call, huh? All right. So I need to ask you guys, part of why the Northern Kingdom wasn't listening is because they thought they didn't have to, right? They had everything they needed. They had money. They had uh, prosperity. They were on top, right? They didn't need any of that. And sometimes, and I know this is the case, right? We have maybe friends that come from another school that we think, I don't know, I don't know you. I don't have to make friends with you, right? Or we think, well, they have like, you know, we have so much more and they don't have it. Maybe we'll give them a little bit, but like, we don't have to listen to them. What they have to say isn't as important. Can anybody give me an example of a time where maybe you should have listened to somebody, but you were thinking you had it all on lock. You didn't really need to listen to somebody else. Go ahead and shoot a hand up if you, if you got one for me. We got one. Hey, Jackson. What did what, you say, buddy? To clean your room, right? So mom is, uh, she's Judah there saying, you really need to clean that room. And he is saying, I am in Israel and I have no plans on doing that. Anybody else? All right. So my next question for you then, you guys, is what happens to us when we don't have our ears open? And we aren't listening to other people. We think it's just all about us all the time. Does our heart get bigger? Does the world get better? Or does our heart get smaller and harder? What do you think? If you think big, go like this. And if you think small, go like this. You're so right, right? I mean, and what happens is your vision gets like this. Ooh, just, like, just like in the Grinch, right? I mean, his heart was so tiny. So what can we do when um, we think another group has nothing to offer? What are some ways that we can actually be listening, actually be listening to Amos, who is talking on behalf of God? What are some of the ways that we can be uh, um, opening those conversations up, making our hearts grow bigger? Anybody have any ideas? All right, all right. I can tell you know I'm at the end of the time. You're trying to coast here on the end. This is, <laughs> here's some ideas, right? We listen. We listen to other people. We make friends that we don't think with people that we think we wouldn't normally make friends with, right? Because we know that God is going to work through those relationships. We know that we want a heart just like the Grinch's that grows. So big it can't even be contained. All right, you guys, bring your noisy offering down. We are going to be making some noise. Throw it in and then go ahead and use our QR code today if you would like to be helping with our ministry. I am so grateful to be here with you this morning.
Please join in the offertory prayer. We bring these gifts to you, not as sacrifices or ways to appease you, but so that in our giving we might be changed. Use the gifts we offer to bring justice and righteousness into the world. For the sake of Jesus, amen. We wait. 
As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, I invite you to get your elements ready and we will commune together, um, both our online uh, congregation and those here, we will commune together after the Lord's Prayer. The Lord, oh, please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated and to Get your elements, take off the clear cellophane. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. And the foil. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. We invite you to sit for a while in the goodness of the Lord, in God's forgiveness. If you are a parent, to trace the sign of the cross on your child's forehead. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please stand. Oh, for the sharing of the peace. <laughs> please stand. <laughs> so uh, if you're online, please share, uh, please share any of your prayer requests in the, in the chat portion so that we can lift one another up. If you're part of this congregation, please write down prayer requests or send them to us in the office so that we can be praying for one another as a community. The peace of the, or the, peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Please share that peace with one another. The Holy Gospel according to John, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. 
I love that passage from Amos that we read earlier, and especially that last verse. Let justice roll out, and righteousness flow like an ever-flowing stream. Just that picture of, of the world that God is creating, the world that God is calling us to, where the justice takes into account and, and uh, heals past injustices, and the world is, uh, is just, right, and righteous in God's eyes. It's what God is calling us to. And um, so I, I think it is interesting. We've been talking a little bit about the world that, was, um, that Amos was in as these words were being written. And to, to know that Jeroboam II, who was king during the time of this, um, of this passage, was a very successful king. He had expanded the territory of the northern kingdom to the same limits that it had had under King Solomon. And uh, he had won many wars, especially in the earlier part of his time, at time as king. And yet, when we read about him in the book of Kings, it just lists the various kings and whether or not they were good kings or bad kings, evil or bad. He, he's listed as one of the bad kings, as one of the evil kings. Why, why is that? Um, in part because he is, he is, there's a parallel drawn between his namesake, Jeroboam I, who was the king right after the two kingdoms split of the northern kingdom. And in fact, was part of the... Um, the reason that it stayed separate, right? He established places to worship in the northern kingdom, not in Jerusalem, that um, made those in the southern kingdom angry, and especially those who would end up writing the history, right? History belongs to the victors, right? We say that um, the southern kingdom was the last to be a kingdom, and so they're the historians. So they are necessarily going to paint the northern kingdom in a negative light. And especially the, the, um, the idea that you could worship any place besides Jerusalem. So they look at Jeroboam II and say, evil king. Even though there is evidence that he was a follower of Yahweh. Some of that evidence is just in the name that he gives to his son, Zechariah, which means, which means a gift from Yahweh, or remembered by Yahweh, I'm sorry, remembered by Yahweh. And then in that passage in, in uh, 1 Kings, when it talks about him, it says that he listened to the prophets. So there's, there's a little bit of political spin going on, even in the Bible. And we aren't sure exactly um, whether or not a lot of the evil that is associated with Jeroboam, especially in regards to his religious life, isn't just, um, just because he didn't fit the southern norm. That being said, if we put aside all that political stuff and just concentrate instead on what Amos is saying we come up with the fact that righteousness and justice, those words that are used in that verse I really like, were a problem in the northern kingdom. Because Jeroboam had expanded the land, he had won military victories, he had land to give away. And he did so to his friends to his political allies. He created a political ruling elite. And uh, it was a situation where the rich got richer and the poor got poorer. There was one of those um, income inequality problems. And 
Jeremiah or Amos, somebody coming from the outside, from the south, who could look and see this with open eyes. You know how it is when you're part of a system, oftentimes you don't really recognize what the problem is, what's going on. Well, Amos was from the south. He could look at the north and see that the rich were getting richer, the poor were getting poorer, that, the, that, those, um, that those who were the haves were not having, were not sharing their wealth and prosperity. And he called out. He, he saw um, callousness to the needy. He saw indifference. And, um, and he ca called out. He, he you know, said it like it was. And um, we would like to think then that means that those in the north, of course, listened and changed. But you know that's not going to happen. Because we know that's not going to happen because we know ourselves, right? I know myself. If somebody comes and tells me I'm doing something wrong, um, first of all, my tendency is to say, well, you know, you don't look so perfect yourself, right? Or, or else um, to say, well, if you don't like it, you know, there's another option down the road. Um, or just to, to do all sorts of things to justify my own position, my own myself, to justify myself. And that tendency that the northern kingdom had and that you and I have to justify ourselves, that is the enemy. That is the enemy of justice and righteousness. Our inability to look at ourselves and ask honestly, what am I doing to contribute to this problem with an open heart? Our inability to do that, that is the enemy of justice and righteousness at the gates. Those words that... Amos is talking about those beautiful words that Amos is talking about. What, what becomes clear in the book of Amos is that prosperity is not an indicator of good. I, I think I've told you before, We've, um, you know, we have a home down in, in um, Wapaka that has a beautiful view and somebody came one time and they saw the house and they saw the view and they said, you are, you know, God must love you or something. And I thought, oh, no, you know, prosperity, having something nice is an indicator of goodness. No, no. We learn from this passage that um, it's not but rather having a heart that's open and willing to follow Christ in the way of justice and righteousness. And I think that obviously it's not just in, it's not just in Amos' time that, we, uh, that those who have tend to close their eyes to those who have not we tend to close our eyes to the ways that our society acts unjustly. And I'm not exactly sure why, because um, I think sometimes we think it's as though we're saying something bad about our country, and, and we're not. I mean, when, when that video was running, I, I, I was tearing up because I'm so thankful for people that are from our congregation or those who have come before, people like my dad, too, who are veterans, who um, fought for the ideals, the ideals of justice and righteousness. And we honor them when we, are, when we ask ourselves, how can we be more just? But instead, oftentimes, we take it as some sort of, um, as some sort of slam, and we harden our hearts to that possibility. And I think, I, I mean, I kind of understand because it's really hard 
to think about what to do. You know, what should I do? We want a simple answer to that, and there are no simple answers to that question. It's kind of like something that happened when I was downtown walking my dog, Honey, this last week. So um, we were coming, uh, if you know where the downtown site is, it's on a corner, and kitty corner to it is City Park. So we were heading towards City Park, and as we came to the corner, I saw this little girl on a bike. And she was waiting for her mom, who's a little further down the, the sidewalk, who was looking at the little library down there. So she's just sitting there waiting at the intersection, and Honey and I cross and go into City Park. And all of a sudden, I hear a commotion. And I look back, and I see this little girl pedaling furiously. She is going kitty corner across two streets, um, not looking one way or the other as her mom is saying, no, no, and she's hollering while she's going, mommy, I'm sorry, mommy, I'm sorry, mommy, I'm sorry, <laughs> as she keeps on going, and she gets to the other side and says, I didn't know which way to go, right? We just sometimes just barrel ahead because we aren't sure, we haven't looked, we haven't stopped, we haven't slowed down. I was also able to hear the, uh, the mom's response to this ha happening. She said, you can't do that. You can't do that. You know, she, her heart had stopped just about as much as mine. And she said, from now on, you're going to have to get off your bike and walk it across the intersections, right? And, um, and I think maybe that's what we need to do is just to, to get off of our bike, to move away from political posturing, to move away from feeling though as though we have to put our two cents in about every single issue as if as if making a point were more important than loving people to get off our bike and just care for one another right hold our hands out to be for to be for the other the person that we disagree with to care about justice for them and for others. And we won't have all the answers right away, but we do have a source. We have a source. It said in that, um, it said in that passage from John that I read, anyone who is thirsty, come, come to me. Anyone who believes in me, drink. We need to drink deeply from the living water. Out of the believer's heart shall flow living water. In the land of Israel, um, there, were, there were streams that were not ever flowing. Amos talked about an ever flowing stream. There were wadis that would just bubble up when there was water, rain or something, and they would dry up and then they would come back. Um, this isn't a supply that's just for a, few, a little bit, right? Jesus' love, Jesus' righteousness isn't just a meager supply. It's an ever-flowing stream, an ever-flowing stream that calls us, that calls us to be for one another, to stand for justice and righteousness in the gates, to be a land and a people, that, that's, that whose hearts burn to do what is right. And our, our job, our goal, isn't to have all the answers, but to keep connected to the source of living water and to keep our hearts soft, or to let Christ keep our hearts soft to, to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, help us to soften our hearts to one another. Give us a, a burning desire to drink deeply of the living water and to share the justice and righteousness that you lead and that you teach, that you give with all around us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please stand and join in the Apostles' Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, you invite all who thirst to come and drink of your living waters. Sustain the weary with your presence and pour over them your healing, especially our brothers and sisters who are named on the prayer list in our bulletin those serving in the military, living their call overseas, and in need of your healing, peace, and wholeness. Provide your loving care to those whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. God of justice, hear our prayer. Bless the memory of those who have turned from evil and fought for what is good, your saints of all times and places. Give us courage to follow their lead and together share in the riches of your eternal kingdom. We pray, pray for comfort for the families and friends of Jerry Blado, Ellen Kutzlub, Buford Ole Olson, and Jeff Rotier. God of justice, hear our prayer. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the baptism of Grace Alice Yablonowski. Be with her parents and sponsors as they guide and teach her. God of justice, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we pray for our ELCA bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Ann Edison Albright, our pastors, Mary and Jeff, and the leadership of our congregation. Watch over and guide them in the future of our church. God of justice, we remember those who have laid themselves on the line and in some cases given their lives in service to their country. Heal their wounds, grant them fair access to treatment and services, and comfort the families of those who did not survive, assuring them that you hold their loved ones close. God of justice, hear our prayer. We offer prayers of thanks with the kids of Kids Cabin Time and Juice Box Hour for fun Zoom filters and favorite Thanksgiving dishes like orange jello salad, and also to not have too much homework. God of justice, loving Jesus, we lift up the concerns of recent recipients of Ruby's Pantry who ask for prayers for a couple of neonatal births, those struggling with depression and unemployment, an elderly person in the last hours of life, and the recovery from colds, flu, and COVID. God of justice, hear our prayer. You hear us, O oh, oh God, before we even ask, and yet you welcome our prayers and hold them all in your loving embrace. 
Gather these together with all those offered on this day, all over the world you have created. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us alive. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise. So live your call. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Remember your people.